Today, I want to share with you one of the happiest events in my life. It's when our governor invited me to speak at a program that was held at the State Capitol building on the 4th of July, 2002. This program was to honor 26 immigrants who pledged their allegiance to become citizens of this great nation of ours. I was asked to talk about the American flag. Now, what more is there to say about the flag uh, other than it has 13 stripes, 50 stars, and the colors are red, white, and blue. I searched the internet for more information about the flag, but I couldn't find what I was looking for. Time is now running out. Two days before the scheduled event, an idea crossed my mind as if by divine intervention. This idea was that I would not talk about the flag and let the flag talk about itself. On the morning of the program, about 100 people had already gathered. I was the first of the four speakers to step up to the podium. One of the first things we memorized as children was the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. In recent years, we have seen the desecration of the flag by our own people. It's been torn apart, burned, trampled on, and sped on. Patriotism is not being taught in our schools today like it was when our teachers were in charge of the classroom. Have you ever wondered what this flag would say? if it could talk. Today, I want to bring to you a message from the very heart of old glory. This is what the flag would say. I am the American flag. I was conceived in the grace of liberty and the hopes of freedom. I was designed by Betsy Ross. Her sewing basket was my cradle. Although I never was an orphan, I was adopted by Congress in 1776 and proclaimed to be the national emblem of a newly born nation on this continent, finding fashion for survival and destined to bring to you and to all mankind a new concept of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I was with Ethan Allen and the Gray Mountain Boys in the Battle of Fort Benjamin. I blazed a trail of Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. I led the settlers coming west and crossed Death Valley in a covered wagon. Once I fell to the ground in Custer's last stand, there was no hand left to pick me up. I was carried through the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli by the United States Marines. I stayed with the boys until it was over over there. I saw the men of our nation fall, and I stood there. The war was over for them, but I st stood vigil over their graves. I stayed to watch the poppies grow across them, row on row, in Arlington National Cemetery. I was raised by the brave soldiers on Iwo Jima in the final hours of World War II. Having changed much in the 236 years, I still have my original 13 stripes. As each state came to the Union, a new star was added to my blue field. It started with 13, and now there are 50. I draped the caskets of our nation's heroes, the president, the admiral, the brave private, and the unknown soldier. Where free men are gathered, for there is justice, equality, faith, hope, and charity. There, too, am I. When you stand with your hand over your heart, and you pledge your allegiance to me. Don't just mouth the words, but think what they mean to you, and mean what you say. And when you come to the phrase, one nation under God, it does not matter what your religious beliefs are. It only matters that you hold your faith dear, practice it daily, and preserve it forever. History will never write my obituary for I am your stars and stripes forever. I will glory on. I am your glory. I am your flag. I am you. These are the words of the American flag.
while the band played Irving Berlin's God Bless America, I had the pleasure and the honor to present each new citizen with an American flag. It is my hope that this event will be as great in their lives as it is in mine. I thank you and God bless America.